water of as they are absorbed in the mood. Oh, Krishna. They are worth taking shelter of because they are absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Radha and Krishna. We are continuing to read from the nectar of devotion. We are reading from the chapter entitled Evidence Regarding Devotional Principles. Subheading Straightforwardness in Ordinary Dealings and Equilibrium in Loss and Gain. There is a statement in the Padma Purana, persons who are engaged in Krishna consciousness should never be disturbed by some material gain or loss. Even if there is some material loss, one should not be perturbed, but should always think of Krishna within himself. The purport is that every conditioned soul is always absorbed in thinking of materialistic activities. He has to free himself from such thoughts and transfer himself completely to Krishna consciousness. As we have already explained, the basic principle of Krishna consciousness is to always think of Krishna. One should not be disturbed in material loss, but rather should concentrate his mind upon the lotus feet of the Lord. A devotee should not be subjected to lamentation or illusion. There is the following statement in the Padma Purana. Within the heart of a person, who is overpowered by lamentation or anger, there is no possibility of Krishna being manifested. So some important instructions there on what should be our mental attitude. Straightforward. It, it mentions straightforwardness in ordinary dealings, but they didn't discuss on that. The, rather, the discussion is more about equilibrium in loss and gain. In this regard, there's a nice example. Uh, Vamsi Das Babaji. There was this one great devotee in the times of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur. And Bhakti, there was this one man, one devotee called Vamsi Das Babaji, and he used to talk to his deities. So he was a Babaji and he was traveling around different places. He had one or two people with him, traveling with him. And uh, no, he was a Babaji, very renowned. So sometimes people, wealthy people, would come and they would give him some contribution. They give him some donation. So, sometimes these different, contra different things which were donated, sometimes money and so on, would be given to him. Sometimes it would be taken by another person. It would be stolen. You know, just like, you know, here in the temple, sometimes you get things, they're given, and then somehow they disappear. And we don't know where they went. <laughs> and so Vamsi Das Babaji, he had, you know, he was just mendicant, moving around, no fixed abode. He didn't have any temple or home or anything. And they would construct some little bamboo dwelling hut and he would stay there for some time and then move on. So when things were stolen, his servant would come and say, you know, Maharaj, the, the, those, remember we got that, those things donated? Now they've disappeared. Somebody's taken them. I don't know where they've gone. And he would simply say, one thief has given and another thief has taken. 
So this was his attitude in loss and gain. Sometimes Krishna, Prabhupada also says that God is like someone with ten arms. We only have two arms, but he, has, he can have ten. And if with ten arms, if he wants to take from us, he can take everything. What can we hold on to with our two arms? Huh? So he, he can take so everything away from us. And if he wants to give us, he can also give us so much. It's we just have to see what is the Lord's desire. Does he want to give us or does he want to take from us? But we should understand whatever happens, it's for our own good. It's for our benefit. The Lord is always thinking of our benefit. He's thinking how to help this person to surrender more, how to help this soul to come back to me. So, sometimes he gives, just like he gave Sudama, and sometimes he takes. There are many devotees, they lost every. The Brahmana from Avanti Day, she lost everything. Prabhupada lost also. Prabhupada had a business. Prabhupada lost everything. It's Krishna's special mercy when he takes. Right? So, this way we should not be disturbed. We'll, we'll just read one more. This is about the demigods. One should not neglect to offer due respect to the demigods. One may not be a one may not be a devotee of demigods, but that does not mean that he should be disrespectful to them. For example, a Vaishnava is not a devotee of Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma, but he is duty-bound to offer all respects to, to such highly positioned demigods. According to Vaishnava philosophy, one should, offer res one should offer respect even to an ant, so that, so, so then what is there to speak of such, so then what is there to speak of such exalted persons as Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma? In the Padma Purana it is said, Krishna or Hari is the master of all demigods and therefore he is always worshipable. But this does not mean that one should not offer respect to the demigods. So we see Lord Chaitanya when he was traveling around India, he would often go and visit the temples of the devas. It's not that he would only go to Vishnu temples, but he would go also to other temples like Menakshi and Madurai and Kanyakumari, many different places where the Lord is worshipped in different forms from Krishna and Vishnu. So we, we can offer respect to them, but it doesn't mean we're worshipping them. We don't accept them as being the Supreme but we don't disrespect them. We should go and offer our respects to them. And of course, usually we don't take the prasad offered to the demigods. We take Vishnu prasad. So, while we go to respect the demigods, we don't respect their prasad. That should be understood. Okay, we'll go ahead to Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Praeshu Vavadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter Number 21, Conversation Between Manu and Kardama, Text Number 21. Tam, Tam. Anubhutya, Oparata, Kriya, Kriya. Artam, Artam. Yartita, Lokata, Oh, Swamayaya, Swamayaya. Vartita, Vartita. Lokatantram, Loka Namami, Namami. Abhikshnam, Amaniya, Amaniya. Padasarojam, Aupiyasi, Kama, Kama. Varsham. Tvam tvam tvanu budyo parata kriya artam Svamaya yavartita loka tantram Namami abhikshnam namami niyapada Sarojam aupiyasi kama varsham. Sarojam aupiyasi kama varsham. Tvam tva, tam tvanu budyo parata kriyartam. Tvam tvanu budyo loko tantram. Namami abhikshnam namani yapada Sarojam alpiyasi kama varsham Tam tvanu budyo parata kriyartam Svamaya yavartita loko tantram. Namamni abhikshnam namani apada. Sarojam alpiyasi kama varsham.
Manages. Tam, that, twa, you, anabhutya, by realizing, uparata, disregarded, kriya, enjoyment of fruitive activities, artam, in order that, swamayaya, by your own energy, vartita, brought about, loka tantram, the material worlds, namami, I offer obeisances, abhikshnam, continuously, namaniya, worshipable, Padasarojam, lotus feet, alpiyasi, on the insignificant, kama, desires, varsham, showering. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. I continuously offer my respectful obeisances unto your lotus feet, of which it is worthy to take shelter, because you shower all benedictions on the insignificant. To give all living entities detachment from fruitive activities by realizing you, you have expanded these material worlds by your own energy. You can all repeat, I continuously offer my respectful obeisances unto your lotus feet, of which it is worthy to take shelter, because you shower all benedictions on the insignificant, to give all living entities Detachment from fruitive activity. By realizing you, you have expanded these material worlds by your own energy. Purport. Everyone, therefore, whether he desires material enjoyment, liberation, or the transcendental loving service of the Lord, should engage himself offering obeisances unto the Supreme Lord, because the Lord can award everyone his desired benediction. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord affirms, Yeyatamam prapadyante, anyone who desires to be a successful enjoyer in this material world is awarded that benediction by the Lord. Anyone who wants to be liberated from the entanglement of this material world is given liberation by the Lord. And anyone who desires to constantly engage in His service in full Krishna consciousness is awarded the, set, the, the benediction by the Lord. For material enjoyment, He has produced 
so many ritualistic sacrificial performances in the Vedas and thus people may take advantage of these instructions and enjoy material life in higher planets or in a noble aristocratic family. These processes are mentioned in the Vedas and one can take advantage of them. It is similar with those who want to be liberated from the material world. Unless one is disgusted with the enjoyment of this world, it cannot, oh, he cannot aspire for liberation. Liberation is for one who is disgusted with material enjoyment. Vedanta Sutra says, therefore, Atato Brahma Jignasa, those who have given up the attempt to be happy in this material world can in inquire about the Absolute Truth. For those who want to know the Absolute Truth, Vedanta Sutra is available, as is Srimad Bhagavatam, the actual explanation of Vedanta Sutra. Since Bhagavad Gita is also Vedanta Sutra, by understanding Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhaga Vedanta Sutra, Bhagavad Gita, one can obtain real knowledge. When one obtains real knowledge, he becomes theoretically one with the Supreme. And when he actually begins the service of Brahman or Krishna Consciousness, he is not only liberated but situated in his spiritual life. Similarly, for those who want to lord it over material nature, there are so many departments of material enjoyment, material knowledge and material science are available and the Lord provides for persons who want to enjoy them. The conclusion is that one should worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead for any benediction. The word Kama Varsham, Kama, Kama Varsham is very significant for it indicates that he satisfies the, de the desires of anyone who approaches him. But one who sincerely loves Krishna and yet wants material enjoyment is in perplexity. Krishna, being very kind towards him, gives him an opportunity to engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord and so he gradually forgets the hallucination. Om Magyana Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Salakaya Chatsurun Militanye Nath Hasmai Shri Gurave Nama Vanchakaupatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaevata Patita nam pavane bio Vaishnavityo namo nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare we're hearing how Kardama Muni, Kardama, Kardama Muni is speaking to Manu. He's offering respects to Manu, the father of mankind, and the representative of the Lord. And he says, according to what we desire, the Lord fulfills our desires. Just like in the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's a verse there where it mentions, Akama Sarva Kamuva Moksha Kama Udaradi Tivrena Bhakti Yogena Yajeta Purushampara. That verse comes in the second canto where 
Sukadeva Goswami had been describing how you can worship different demigods and achieve different things. You know, according to what you desire, there's an appropriate demigod to worship. You want money, you worship Lakshmi. You want a husband, you worship Shiva. You want good health, you worship Surya. And you want to be able to uh, study and do well, you worship Saraswati. Like this, different demigods are there to fulfill our material desires. And there's a big list, a long, long list. And at the end of it, Sukadeva Goswami says, but whatever you want, you can simply worship Vishnu or Krishna and he can fulfill your desire. You don't need to worship all these demigods because this endless 33 crore, right? 330 million demigods. So you can't worship all them. It's a lot. We can hardly worship one. So we worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu. Akama Sarvakamuva, Moksha Kama Udari. Whether you have all material desires or no material desire or simply desire for liberation, still we should worship the one Supreme Lord Vishnu or Krishna. And this way we will have our desire fulfilled. Of course, we should be very careful of what we want to get. And just like uh, Prabhupada mentions here, he said, uh, somebody may desire a lot of material things, but at the same time, if he sincerely loves Krishna, he wants material enjoyment, but at the same time he, said he loves Krishna, then Krishna, very kind to him, to him, is very kind to him, he gives him a chance for devotional service. He asking for material enjoyment from the Lord is like asking the mother to give me poison. You go to your mother and say, Mom, give me some poison. I don't want to live here anymore in this world, you know. No mother will give the child poison. And so in the same way we come to the Lord and we ask the Lord, give me, I want money, I want power, I want fame, I want, I want, I want. A list of so many material things to satisfy our senses. So the Lord considers, you know, well, if I give him all these things, you know, what will happen? You know, they'll suffer so much and they'll forget me. So, why should I fulfill their material desires? So, the Lord will first of all see, you know, how much are we really attached to these material things. And He will try to purify us. He will give us a taste for devotional service. And when we get a little taste for devotional activities, then we hope we can forget the material desires. Just like Many people come to Krishna Consciousness, they have material desires. Sometimes they're attracted by the young women, you know, and think, oh, I want to see these gopis, you know. They come to see all the ladies in the Krishna Consciousness. Um, but they become a Krishna Consciousness, they were attracted by the young women, but they take up devotional service and they forget their material desires and they can become devotees. One devotee describes he, he wanted to steal Prabhupada's watch. He had the desire to steal Prabhupada's watch. So after some time it happened, Prabhupada gave him his watch. <laughs> Prabhupada gave it to him. And he understood, you know, when Prabhupada gave him the watch, then he understood, you know, it's really crazy. He didn't really need the watch. It's nothing. So. Krishna does like that. Something to, he wants us to learn how insignificant these material desires really are. That what, what we are asking for is really foolishness. It's really not necessary. We don't need all these material things. We just simply need to hear and chant. We need to go on with our Krishna consciousness. So anyway, for people who have strong material desires, there is processes by which they can fulfill their material desires. 
There are karma kandi activities, right? Karma kandi processes, fruit of activities. You can worship different demigods and so on. Oh, but better still is to worship the Supreme Lord. Because if we worship the demigods, they are easily pleased, but they are also easily angered. They can give us some trouble. And they will not consider what is actually good for us. But Lord Vishnu or Lord Krishna, before he will fulfill, fulfill the desires of his devotee, he will consider if this is actually good for them before he gives that desire. So this is why worship of Vishnu or Krishna is superior. That Krishna is a well-wisher of his devotees. He's thinking about their welfare, about what is actually the best thing for them. And he will not give them insignificant material sense gratification if it's going to cause them to lose their Krishna consciousness. They forget all about Krishna. Sometimes a young man wants to have a very beautiful wife. <laughs> and when the, if the young man, if he marries a very beautiful young woman, he'll completely forget, you know, be doomed. Forget everything. Lost, entangled in the material world. A very dangerous situation. And same way you think some people want a lot of wealth and they get the money, then they forget everything about Krishna consciousness. They just simply think about the money, enjoying the money. And so we have to be, a devotee has to be grateful to Krishna for whatever situation one is in. That we think this is the mercy of Krishna, that he's put me in this situation. And if we have difficulties, then devotee also accepts these difficulties, right? We think, actually, I'm meant to suffer much more, but Krishna is just giving me a little difficulties. Actually, we could have so many more problems in the material world. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm so unfortunate. Oh, everybody's got more than me. Everybody's life is so much better than mine. But there are so many people much less fortunate and in a, in a much more uh, unhappy and miserable situation in the material world. And so we, we have to appreciate that the situation which we're placed in by the arrangement of Krishna is actually the best situation for us to become Krishna conscious. And this is what Krishna wants. Krishna wants that we should become his devotees, that we should surrender to him. So, Prabhupada quotes from Bhagavad Gita, Yeyata mam prapajyante. As we surrender to Krishna, Krishna rewards us accordingly. If we only surrender a little bit to Krishna, then Krishna can only reciprocate a little bit. He will not give us the full mercy. Hmm? Anyone, who, uh, anyone who wants to be liberated can be given liberation if, if they really sincerely desire that liberation. But better still than liberation is to be engaged in Krishna consciousness. Just simply to get liberation from the material world, that is not very important for a devotee. Because devotional service means we're already liberated. Devotional service is performed on the platform of liberation. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Brahma Buddha Prasanatma Na Sochati Na Kanchati Sama Sarveshu Bhutishu Mad Bhakti Labhate Param. Right? Brahma Bhutta Prasanatma. One who is Brahma Bhutta, who knows he's Brahman, that he's not the body, who's understood he's a soul, then he is joyful. He is Prasanatma. Right? He's a happy soul. 
He's not miserable, he's not angry and violent and nasty and harsh. You know, that's the mode of passion and ignorance. But one who knows he's not the body, he's a joyful soul. Right? We are known as the happy Krishnas, right? Not just Hare Krishna, but happy Krishnas. Where people always see us singing, dancing. At least they used to always see us singing and dancing. And they would call us generally the, the happy Krishnas. Because they were always singing and dancing. How can they do it, you know? Because we know we're not the body, right? Brahma Buddha Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanchati. We don't hanker or lament for anything. Sama Salveshu Bhuteshu. We see everyone equally. We see all living entities as spirit souls. Madbhaktim Labhati Param. In such position, we take up devotional service. So, devotional service begins on the Brahma Buddha platform. We are actually devotees, we have to come to the Brahma Bhutta platform. Bhakti Yoga is performed on that liberated platform. We cannot be in bodily consciousness and be, think we're doing Bhakti Yoga. No, we have to transcend all of that. So that is, this is the level of Krishna consciousness. Liberation is for the jnanis. They struggle. To get liberation, very difficult. They make progress very slowly and with great difficulty. Somehow they try to get liberated. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Bahunam Gyanmanamante Gyanavam Mam Prapadyante Vasudev Sarvamiti Samahatma Sadur. This describing the jnani. After many births and deaths, one who is actually in knowledge surrenders to me. Such a soul is very rare. So, by knowledge, you're not going to make progress very quickly, very slowly. Elsewhere in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes the jnani and their progress. He says, Klesho dekatarastesham avyakta sapta chetasam. He said, for, for those who are attached to the unmanifested, like the jnanis, you see, they're attached to the, the unmanifested, the Brahman, then everything is difficult. The language, realize the language, very difficult. You have to read so many books and understand so much philosophy, make progress very slowly. But Krishna consciousness is like the elevator, like going in the lift. You, you join the Sankirtan party, you go out there, you chant and dance, you're in ecstasy. Very quickly we get freed from the attachment to the material body when we surrender to Krishna. Of course, we have to surrender ourselves. We can't just simply sit at home and think, I'm surrendered. No. Surrender means you take up active devotional service. All right? We, we want to chant and dance and distribute Krishna consciousness. We're active. The devotional service means activity. Doesn't mean just contemplating, sitting, but action. So, Krishna knows the desire of everyone according to their situation. Krishna arranges for them. For the, in order to get material enjoyment, Krishna gave the Vedas and the Karma Kandi activities. That's it, and then. There's also the impersonal parts of the Vedas describing how one can get liberation. But if they want to do devotional service, this is also there. Hmm? So actually the, the, the Vedanta Sutra, Prabhupada quotes Vedanta Sutra, which begins, Atato Brahma Jignasa. Atato means now. Now, why now? The Vedanta Sutra begins by saying, now, 
Now you are a human being, because only the humans will pick up the Vedanta Sutra and try to read it, try to understand it. Now you've got the human life, so you can understand Brahma Jignasa, the knowledge of Brahman. We want to know what is the difference between matter and spirit, and who is the controller of these things. So this is what human life is meant for. So intelligent class of people, they're meant to read books like Vedanta Sutra. And we're reading here Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. The Sutra, Sutra means condensed. You know, just like milk, you get condensed milk, right? Very thick milk, boiled, you boil off all the water make it really thick and creamy. So, Sutra, the Vedanta Sutra, the Vedas is very vast, so many books. But Vedanta, Veda means knowledge, Vedanta means the end of knowledge. And it's put in a Sutra, very condensed, because we don't have time to read all the Vedas. Right? Vedeshu Durlabham. Lord Brahma said, by the Vedas, very difficult to know Krishna. Vedi should durlabham. Adurlabham atma bhakto. But by, by devotion, we can know very easily. Very, very quick. What, what is it? Sorry, the last connection program. Very, very, Hare Krishna, Hare. Very easily we can know Krishna by devotion, but by the Veda it's very difficult. So Srila Vyasadeva, he compiled Vedanta Sutra. Vedanta, the end of knowledge. And end of knowledge means to know Krishna, right? The end of knowledge is Krishna, but it's put in a sutra condensed form, very difficult to understand. What is it all about? So the Mayavadis, the impersonalists, the followers of Shankaracharya, they spend all their time just reading Vedanta Sutra and speculating and trying to understand what it's all about. But we have Srimad Bhagavatam. Now Srimad Bhagavatam is also written by Srila Vyasadeva. Srila Vyasadeva wrote Vedanta Sutra and he also wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. He wrote Srimad Bhagavatam to explain to us what is the purpose behind the Vedanta Sutra. So this Srimad Bhagavatam, this is actual commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. And so we are so fortunate. We can hear this from Srila Vyasadeva, we're here, Srila Vyasadeva, and we have the commentaries, also the purports of so many different acharyas presented to us by Srila Prabhupada, and Srila Prabhupada also gives us his own purports. So, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam is very important for us to understand what is actually Brahman, what is matter, and what is spirit, and who is the controller. But, uh, we said by, by the process of knowledge, then it's very slow, very difficult, but by devotion, very quickly. So people who have material desires, they want to lord over the material world, then so many different departments, so many different arrangements are there that people can get that facility. Prabhupada comments about this word, this, uh, this kama varsham, kama varsham, the, the last two words in the verse. Kama meaning desires and varsham, showering, showering desires. <laughs> the, 
in the, in the translation it said, be, you shower all benedictions on the insignificant. So we say man proposes and God disposes, right? According to what we propose, what we ask for, we get according to our qualification. So we have to be very careful what we ask for. That's so, <laughs> that's the, 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 the predicament we're in, that what we ask for can put us into a very dangerous situation. We have to know what we want to get, where we want to go. If we just simply ask for something which is going to satisfy material set, which we think is going to bring material pleasure, bring us enjoyment in the material world, we have to understand there may be other consequences as a result of that. You get different problems. But Krishna is hearing everyone, he understands everyone's desires, he's in the heart of everyone. So he knows everyone as, as a Paramatma, his expansion is in the heart as Paramatma, and the Paramatma is seated next to the individual soul. So he can understand the desire of each and every living entity. And we get the resultant of our desires, you know. Some desire that way, some desire this way, and you get the resultant. Takes us there. So Krishna is there, he's very much in touch with us. He knows what we're thinking, what is in our heart. He knows how much we want him, and he knows also how much we're hankering for material enjoyment. We have to be very careful. We have to try to purify the heart. We want to try to please Krishna. We want to please Krishna by our submission by our proper mood of devotion. And in this way Krishna reciprocates and he can make arrangements for us to progress in our Krishna consciousness. That's the goal. We want to progress out of this material world. We don't want to just try to be happy. Of course we want to be happy and at the same time progress. So Krishna can give that Krishna consciousness we can experience actually great happiness. Being a devotee does not mean you have to suffer. Doesn't mean you have to be poor. Doesn't mean you have to just uh, struggle constantly from moment to moment. Krishna, Krishna arranges. You can see somehow this temple has come up and somehow the temple is going on. Right? It's going on and we hope it's going to go on continually. And this is Krishna who is providing. Prabhupada used to say, we have so many centers all over the world and this, each center is spending so much money and nobody is working. Who is providing? He said, Krishna is providing. Krishna gives. We don't give. We don't have anything. It's all given. It's all the grace of Krishna. We just have to use everything carefully in the service of Krishna. Any questions? As uh, mentioned, like uh, Vedanta Sutra Guru Maharaj, is it a summary of the, the Vedas and uh, like Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, Bhagavad Gita, all this, is it expansion of we said Srimad Bhagavatam is understood as the commentary of the Vedanta Sutra. Right? The Vedanta Sutra is in a very condensed form. So it's not clear to understand what everything, what it's all about. So to guide us, we have the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is exp the commentary, the, 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 
proper under the actual understanding of what is matter and what is spirit and who is the controller of everything. It is all explained there in Srimad Bhagavatam. And this teachings of Srimad Bhagavatam are what Vedanta Sutra was presenting in a condensed form. Bhagavad Gita is similar to Srimad Bhagavatam, but Bhagavad Gita is a much more simpler presentation. Prabhupada would sometimes say the Bhagavad Gita is like the ABC, whereas the Srimad Bhagavatam is a graduate study, and Chaitanya Charitamrita is like postgraduate study. You see? So it's like that. We study these books, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, these books. And it's good before we try to go too deeply or too much into Srimad Bhagavatam, we should be conversant with the Bhagavad Gita. Just like you want to read and write, you first should learn the alphabet, right? So Bhagavad Gita is like the alphabet. You start off with the Bhagavad Gita and get the basic philosophy, then you can go into Srimad Bhagavatam. And then from Srimad Bhagavatam, you can go into the Chaitanya Charitamrita, where a more detailed study of Srimad Bhagavatam takes place in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So, the Vedanta Sutra, we do, we're, we're studying it from the Srimad Bhagavatam. We don't need to study it separately. There are editions of Vedanta Sutra. Prabhupada didn't give us, but there is a com there is a famous commentary which is given by a great Acharya named Baladeva Vidyabhusan. He wrote a famous commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. And Prabhupada dedicates his Bhagavad Gita to that book. And sometimes Prabhupada will quote if there's something relevant there in the Vedanta Sutra then Prabhupada will quote it, just like that verse, Atato Brahma Jignasa. So that is from the Vedanta Sutra. So Prabhupada quotes it in the purport. So what is important for us is given to us in Prabhupada's purports, in the Srimad Bhagavatam and in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Bhagavad Gita. Other things? Prabhupada said, we don't require to read many books, right? He mentioned what books we need to read. You read the, his books, what he's given us. Chaitanya Charitamrita, many volumes. Srimad Bhagavatam, many volumes. And Bhagavad Gita, Nectar of Devotion, this book. If you read these books, you're doing very well. And you will have everything you need to know. You don't need to read Vedanta Sutra. Whatever in, is in Vedanta Sutra, you will already know it from Prabhupada's books. Any other questions? Upanishads? Well, we have Prabhupada's commentary on the Sri Ishopanishad. There are 108 Upanishads. Prabhupada gave us the Sri Ishopanishad. He said this is the most important one. This is the only one which the Acharyas give commentaries on. The other Upanishads, people don't write any commentaries on them. Hmm. The Upanishads are like stepping stones to Varnashram, leading to higher things, you see. So the Upanishads are uh, presenting the philosophy of Krishna consciousness in a more covered manner. It doesn't reveal everything. Just like in Sri Ishopanishad, you won't find the name Krishna there. It simply talks about the Lord or the, the Supreme. Om, and like that, you see? 
it's, the Upanishads can be more impersonal. Because the Upanishads come from the Vedas. You see, the Upanishads are part of the Vedic literature. And we said, Vedeshu Durlabham. Very difficult to know Krishna or Govinda from the Upanishads or from the Vedas. That's why we don't worry too much about the Upanishads. Sometimes, some verse from the Upanishads will be quoted. Prabhupada will quote in his purport, Kali Sankara Upanishad, Mundaka Upanishad, different Upanishads. Prabhupada may quote a verse from them. But we don't usually sit and read all the Upanishads. It will be very dry. But sometimes we quote because Vedic, Vedic texts. But uh, uh, these other Upanishads, there's no, no commentaries. The Acharyas never comment on them. Only the Ishopanishad. So we have that. That's enough. The Puranas, uh-huh. So, Srila Vyasadeva wrote 18 Puranas, and uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is considered the fruit of all of the Vedic literature. It's the cream, the, the best of all the Puranas, the topmost Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, and similarly, these other Puranas, you, you don't find that there's uh, a lot of comments or discussion on these other Puranas. They're there. You can get them if you want. You can read them. Some devotees have translated them and put them into print. So if you want to read these other Puranas, you can read them. But you, don't, you won't get much out of them. It's not like the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's not quite, it's not the same. This Srimad Bhagavatam is the, the cream of all the Puranas. Nigama kalpa taror galatam palam shuka mukadam rita dravasam yasam. This Srimad Bhagavatam is like the fruit of the tree. The Vedas are like a tree and the Bhagavatam is the fruit of the tree. And this is the topmost of all the Puranas. Srila Vyasadeva wrote the 18 Puranas, he wasn't satisfied. And then Narada Muni came to him and told him why he was not satisfied. Right? And it's described here in the Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto. Why Srila Vyasadeva was not satisfied after writing 18 Puranas was he had not properly emphasized the importance of devotional service. So these other Puranas, that's what goes on. There's more a discussion and talking more about ritualistic activities and different things, not emphasizing devotion, the real path of surrender to the Supreme Lord and devotional service. So Narada Muni chastised Vyasadeva and told him, because you didn't give the real thing, you didn't give the highest thing to the people. So therefore, Srila Vyasadeva wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. This is his mature offering to people. We say, Krishna Swadamo Pagate Dharma Jnana Dipisaha Kalo Nishtadrishamisha Puranatodranodrita, that this Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun and it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna for his own abode. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the age of Kali will get light from this Purana, not from the other Purana. This Purana is very special, very unique. The other Puranas, it's not the same. You can read them, you can see for yourself. It's nothing like this Purana. 
some things are, that are put on us for the mode of goodness, that are put on us for the mode of passion, and that are put on us for the mode of ignorance. Six Puranas in each. So generally we stick more to the Puranas which are associated with the mode of goodness. That's a lot better. You go down to the lower Puranas and you really get confused. <laughs> you know, because people who are in passion and ignorance, they need to get special direction. And they're given direction, you know, worship Shiva, do this sacrifice, and you know, it's a whole different mood. Because they're in the mode of passion and ignorance. So they have to get different instructions. But people who are in goodness, they get a different kind of instructions. Their instructions are on a higher level. And the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is for pure goodness, for those who have transcended, who have come to the, the, the pure level. This is the Shuddha, Shuddha Sattva platform, pure goodness. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada.